All right, here we go. Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to a special edition of the Neo Marketing Podcast. We're recording via Zoom. We have a special guest. We're doing it different. Why? Because of COVID-19, of course. So my name is Kyle Golding, Pritch Pritchard's on the call, and we have special guest Steve Davis right here with us today. So make sure and come right back for the Neo Marketing Podcast. Welcome to the Golden Group Neo Marketing Podcast, a bi-weekly discussion of modern business communication. Hey everyone, welcome to the Neo Marketing Podcast. My name is Kyle Golding. As always, I'm here with my partner, Pritch Pritchard, and our special guest today, Steve Davis from Insperity. We're all talking about how the business world is reacting to COVID-19. Rich, say good morning. Good morning. Steve, jump in here. Tell us what you're doing today. Good morning. I'm working from remotely from the bunker, um, trying to set up appointments in the COVID-19 era. Challenge, believe me. So if you fans of the podcast will know, Steve was on with us almost a year ago that last summer while Pritch was teaching in Europe. So Steve and I had a conversation about Insperity HR, business insurance, all kinds of different things, and the Oklahoma Venture Forum. Uh, Steve is a past chairman of the Oklahoma Venture Forum who was very instrumental in me being able to survive my chairmanship this year with the Oklahoma Venture Forum, considering that the last couple of months of the year was completely demolished by COVID-19, but we made a great recovery and had a good end of the session and it looks like, Steve, looks like 20, the 2020-2021 session that starts in the end of August and early September is going to be virtual and online, uh, much like this, through, through the end of 2020 anyways. I saw that, and you paved the way. I think that was fate, Kyle, that, that you were the chairman at a time when we needed technology to work. And um, the award ceremony that you pulled off, it was amazing. And it's it's kind of paving the way to the, for the future of OVF because... I really don't see this turning around until 2021, the first part of 2021, until we get a vaccine. I really don't. I was I was really sad and kind of bummed out that we weren't going to be able to, to have our in-person um, awards event that we typically do, but we pulled it off, obviously having Scott Kozlowski as, as the keynote speaker and all the technology and insight he brings because he's doing all kinds of presentations like this for a long time before COVID was a huge feather in our cap. And special thanks to you because you helped us set up uh, Scott being our keynote speaker. So um, I'm super happy that it worked out the way it did, considering it could have worked out really poorly, right? I think that's the, that's the theme, yeah. right? That's the theme yeah. for 2020 is, you know, shit happens. And you um, all you can do is adapt, adopt, and pivot in order yeah. to survive. In 2020, we've been talking a lot on the podcast about that. So today everyone listening, we're going to go through some, some examples that we're seeing of people doing well. We might bring up some examples of people like floundering and, and putting themselves in a bad spot and let you have some ideas on how your business, your brand, whatever it is you're working on, even your career within someone else's uh, corporate structure can survive and thrive during COVID-19. So Pritch, What's happening at the university level? I know it's changing on a regular basis, but it looks like fall classes aren't going to happen in person. So how are you guys adapting to education in the second half of 2020? Well, the, uh, the biggest pivot was spring break when uh, COVID was just hitting in March and the university said, after spring break, we're going to be vir all virtual. Fortunately, many of us have taught online before, so... We were able to make that pivot, but boy, it was in a hurry. Um, and I don't, I, I, <laughs> I adapt or die. I mean, that's the, that's the, uh, that's the mantra. We're going to be uh, in person. They're still telling us in person for classes of 40 or fewer. If okay. the class is uh, more than 40, then it's online. And, um, we're going to be required to wear masks the entire time, social distancing, uh, facilities has put uh, new filters into the air handlers and opened up more outside air. Uh, they're revising spaces to give us that social distancing. And uh, I, I, it's going to be a very, very interesting environment, but it is very much adapt or die. So the biggest question for you is, are we going to get college football this fall? 
I don't think so. Yesterday, the I SEC keep holding up hope. The logic side of me is like, there's no way it's happening. But man, the fan in me is like, please, please, please find a way yeah. for us to have college football. Exactly. Um, but I don't know how to get to cram thousands of people into that stadium and, and even with mask and, and yeah, play. not going to happen. The and, SEC uh, the, pulled out of the Tennessee game, didn't they? They're yeah, not playing we're anything the last, but conference last games. Power five conference to have uh, – um, more than the non-conference games, and I don't know that that's going to last past next week. Yeah, so that loses one of OU's uh, first non-conference game. The other one was with Army, which, is, of course, is located in the state of New York. state of New York had already announced if they have sporting events that people that there, no fans can be can go. So um, I, I'd, I'd almost bought my tickets to go to that game, and um, sadly it's not going to happen because uh, that campus is uh, something, I think, to, to worth visiting. For, yeah, uh, it, for those of us believe me it is i've been i've been two or three different times and um west point the hudson river that whole scene um army football it's too bad that the ou fans are going to miss out on that the home game was so great here in in norman yep. last year um yeah it's that's that's super disappointing but and you met you mentioned tennessee steve yep we lost that game yesterday yeah, I saw that. Steve, what are you guys doing and what's Insperity doing at a corporate level? Um, I'm sure you guys, because there's a, a lot of people that work for Insperity all over the country, so I'm sure you guys have had some smart responses to how you guys can all work remotely and still stay connected. So what are you guys doing that you think is really uh, viable for any business to be looking at when it comes to managing staff during COVID-19? Well, partnering with a company like Insperity and outsource. HR solution, um, it enabled us to be right on the forefront as far as providing information and communications for employees, which is critical during a crisis like this. Uh, that and the compliance piece, I mean, the, the laws, the, um, the PTO, the pay time off, all that stuff just came down within a matter of weeks. Um, and Insperity was on top of it with employee communications, um, you know, multiple times a week, not just to our 2,500 corporate employees, but to the 230,000 worksite employees we have around the country. I mean, you can imagine all the small businesses were freaking out with what do we do now? The other big thing is the PPP loan. That, that was critical for us to gather that information early on and uh, put it in a format that the banks would accept and talk our clients through that process. And the result was the national average, so it was about 20% of the people got a PP loan. At Insperity, 60% of our clients got it within the first seven days. So, and it was because of the reporting and the way we capture information and report information. Um, so we've been, we've been doing a lot in the communications compliance area, but also in the safety area. Um, giving guidance to um, best practices for safety. I mean, it's a whole nother aspect of, you know, the new world. If you're going back to work, then how are you going to do it safely um, and comply with not only federal but state regulations and everything else that, you know, controls your business? And then the, well, second, uh, half, the second half of that, right, with safety also comes from your employees feeling safe, right? Feeling valued by the company and, and feeling oh, yeah. like they're being protected so that they're willing to do whatever it takes to, to keep working because they think the company's got their back, right? You bet. And, and then, I mean, and that's the case with a lot of our clients. You know, we had, we had lots of tough discussions with them early on. You know, what are we going to do? Well, a, a lot of them opted for a temporary layoff where their employees kept their benefits, which is critical during a health crisis. And, you know, when things pick up, they'll be able to hire them back up and they won't miss a beat. Um, you know, the continuity of the payroll and the benefits and stuff, the technology that drives all that, it's people can depend on it during a time like this. And when you're, you know, our company has gone almost completely remote except for essential employees in the big centers. Um, and we were able to kind of do that because of our infrastructure and technology and the way we're able to to harness technology um, with a flip of a switch, basically. Well, Steve, so I've got a question really for you. Yes, sir. Um, one of my biggest concerns is they've mandated masks, and that's that's wonderful. 
research says it cuts down by 85% the possibility of, of, of contracting COVID-19. What are you advising your clients in terms of compliance once they get back into a, a workplace? Or just for me, if I've got a student who refuses to wear his mask because somehow that's become a political statement now, um, what, what advice would you give to a client about that? Comply with whatever your local and state regulations are. Um, if you want people to wear a mask into your place of business, you can post it. Um, it's legal to be able to do that. Um, so comply with whatever the government directives are um, in order to keep your business open. That's that's the advice we're giving people. And then, you know, the other thing is testing. There's a lot of gray area on testing. You can't manda mandate tests. Um, so we've had a lot of questions about, you know, moving forward, what's the best way to proceed? Um, it does seem like there's a lot, it, there's still a lag in the amount of testing, how quickly you get results back, et cetera. So you might get a positive result, especially the, the faster tests, the more rapid tests have more likelihood of or the false net positives. And some people aren't allowed to go back to work until they get a, a, a negative or even two negatives, which might take 14, 21, 28 days to get just testing and results back, right? How did, how's the, what's the balance there on HR and allowing people to work and be in a, in a physical place, especially if they can't work remotely and the availability of testing? What, what's the, yeah, how, I mean, that, how do you manage that? Yeah, that's the, that's the, the, $50 question. Accommodate, accommodate, accommodate. I mean, that's our, always our advice. Um, work it out with the employees on the what's best for their situation. I mean, in this day and age, remote work is, is you know, it's, it's what's happening everywhere. I mean, you guys know um, we're driven to that because there's no other alternative. So we help companies help our clients try to find ways to accommodate um, you know what people need I, the whole school situation I mean we're doing surveys and trying to figure out what's best for our employees we have employees who are volunteering to put together student groups within our company um, to teach you know other inspiring people's kids I mean we're going bending over backwards to make sure everybody feels safe and can still get their jobs done. So, I think, do you think virtual is here to stay? Oh, I totally do. I think the commercial real estate industry in the next yeah. two years is going to completely change. I mean, here we are, a, a publicly traded $3 billion company, been in business 34 years, and we have office space in all these fabulous buildings in all the metropolitan areas. I mean, Kyle's been to my office. It's fantastic. 26th floor, a beautiful view, and it's empty, and it has been since March 17th. Um, so, I mean, think of how many companies are going through that decision-making process and how many commercial real estate people are saying, oh, crap, what are we going to do? Hey, let's, right. let, let's flip that on its head, though. Let's have an OVF conversation now. So uh, one of the selling points to bringing businesses to Oklahoma has always been the, the cost of doing business. Commercial real estate is definitely a lot more uh, manageable than in, in a lot of other metropolitan areas. Does the state of Oklahoma and the city of Oklahoma City and Tulsa, et cetera, have opportunities to attract business headquarters because they could be smaller footprint and then they can have their staff that they, whether it's because of training, education, et cetera, that's all over the country yeah. because they don't have to be here. Is there, is there a great opportunity for small markets, if you will, to uh, take advantage of, of people moving out of Manhattan and Silicon Valley, et cetera. Yeah, and, I, and I, I believe that is true. And my friends that are in the commercial real estate business have told me that um, just within the last 30 days. Um, I, I think there's going to be a lot of fleeing from the big cities to places like Oklahoma City. And if we, I mean, I think we're positioned with the downtown and all the things we got going on to get some of that market share and to, to show people um, there's a better place to live than um, New York or Portland or, you know, any of these, any of these big cities where, you know, the taxes are going to be so high and they're not going to be safe. Um, one thing that you can really say 
about Oklahoma doing, you feel safe here. That's um, true. You definitely do. So, yeah, I, I'm always, you know, the, the pure optimist to me is always like, let's find the business opportunity in this, uh, you know, to, to lure, you know, I think Tulsa coming second place to Austin to get t the Tesla factory is a pretty good example of Oklahoma as a state is really in a prime spot to attract uh, attention because business is going to be done differently moving forward because of uh, not just COVID itself, but the lessons we've learned in remote work, productivity, connectivity, et cetera. Oh, you bet. And you know, Tulsa was way ahead of the curve on that when they were paying people 10 grand to move to Tulsa and work remotely a couple of years ago. So um, they, I mean, they figured out early on and I think they'll be able to attract people because they have that program in place. I mean, yeah. I, I think that that's something else that, um, you know, worked for them. And I think more and more places, small markets are going to be doing those kind of things to get people um, to realize that there's better places to live for you and your family than a big city. That's right. The second half of what you said earlier, though, about compliance and doing what you do, um, whatever your local and, and city and state governments tell you to. Pritch and I have talked a lot about on the podcast about how you should be over communicating, especially using your social media, your website, your emails. Your, your traditional marketing channel should be over communicating your compliance, right? So if you have a restaurant, yeah. retail business, people should know beforehand, I need to have a mask or their hours have changed or it's curbside only, et cetera. Um, yeah, you right. The, the key is the key to what the public faces communication, right? That's exactly right. I mean, I, I've been seeing it in all kinds of different formats on every platform and I'm, I'm on all of them. Um, Instagram even is is doing COVID-19 stuff. I mean, the things that you can buy on the internet that are COVID related is insane right now. Um, and I think there's lots of lots of cyber stuff going on. Lots of lots of criminals out there that are doing a lot of fishing during this time because so many people are online and doing things differently. There's a lot of people are seizing on that opportunity as well. My cyber friends are telling me it's never been like this before. Um, I have a couple clients that are in that business and it's been nuts since this all started. That's the downside, right? That's the, the, tr the snares we might step into if we go f fully virtual with our businesses, uh, is the, is the security issue, right? Yeah, I, I, that's, that's one of them. I just think that business are, and associations and clubs and groups like OBF or everybody's trying to find kind of a happy medium between the two let's do stuff virtually, but let's also figure out a way for us to network, um, you know, at separate events. And I know we talked about, you know, being able to do that within our OBF group. Uh, well, there's several other groups that I'm involved in that are doing the same kind of things. They're just looking for ways to, to kind of accommodate both styles, but keep people safe. And it's, and it's, I, it's I, pushed right for, I pushed for that in-person element really hard when we had those discussions because um, it's definitely one of the things that I connect with with OVF is getting in the room with top-notch professionals, business thinkers, and not just meeting, but getting in to have conversations, pick people's brains, um, and c create relationships. You know, our, our business is built on relationships. We promote all our clients building relationships. Um, and so that's kind of the second half of the taking everything virtual, right, is there's cost benefits and there's convenience. There's obviously safety. But there still has to be human interaction and the idea of relationship building for all of us to move forward and successfully, right? Right. And, and that's been the hardest thing for me to maintain. Um, I have people that I've had relationships with for many years here in Oklahoma City. I've been 25 years, been doing business here. Um, I, I've kept in touch with those folks, checking on them and and how their business is doing, but the new relationships, virtually uh, meeting strangers and trying to move a, a business deal forward, I, I found that really difficult. And I've, I've had some success at it, but the last thing I sold was um, something in March that I had lunch with the guy at OVF um, from Solar Power of Oklahoma. I, oh, yeah. I sold, yeah. So he was sitting there at the table with me. There you go. You know, would I have ever 
met him or had an opportunity with him if I hadn't been sitting there? No, I wouldn't have. Virtually, maybe I would have followed up with him. Galvanic Energy, our award winner. Mm -hmm. I met, I, I saw him on our deal. I was interested in their ideas and what they were doing. I met with him in my office, social distanced, and we were the only two people in the whole Oklahoma Tower that day, I think. Um, okay. But I've been able to move that forward, and I, you know, I, but I had to lay eyes on him. Yeah. Um, and meet him, even though I'd virtually connected with him and I got him interested in what I was trying to communicate with him about, I had to kind of, he had to look across the table and know I'm a serious person. And sometimes it's really hard to do virtually. That's true. And Pritch, on the PR side, right, we've already been talking about how PR has been morphing and changing from traditional PR to more of the digital aspect of PR. But now this extra element thrown in there as well really kind of changes the approach, although the core values of PR are still the same, but the approach and execution is definitely a 2020-2021 version, right? It, it's going to be very interesting teaching this campaigns class this semester. We finished it uh, in the spring online, but the challenges of a virtual world, because let's face it, we're social animals. <laughs> we, we, we need the company of others. Um, and relationships are built on that, on that psychology, on that sociology. So, um, <laughs> number one, teaching the class is going to be a real challenge. But then what the students are going to be able to pick for strategies are, are going to be limited, although there are lots of technical tools. You know, they don't all get the job done. So, yeah, public relations is... is is like everybody else trying to figure it out um, and, and figure out how to, how to bring that kind of group. You know, we, we, need, we need people, we need contact. And how, you, how do you bring that about in a virtual world? It's a real challenge. So folks, we've been telling you on the podcast for the last six months, uh, when it comes to COVID, adapt, adopt, or pivot. You have to do something, you know, you always have to adjust to the market. Well, now the whole market's being squeezed by COVID. I think these are some good conversations uh, that we've had today about some different ways that people are approaching it. At the end of the day, uh, best practices, core values, over communication. These are, these are things that are timeless and they're going to continue to remain timeless when it comes to addressing business moving forward. Uh, I want to have a special shout out to our special guest today, Steve Davis from Asperity. We appreciate you coming on the show for the second time on the Neo Marketing Podcast. We appreciate you joining us via Zoom like this as we adapt and adopt how we record the podcast and get things done. Um, as always, I'm happy to have conversations with Pritch and myself. I'm always happy to be communicating with you guys on the podcast and the videos. Hit us up on social media. Check out, uh, subscribe to the podcast, subscribe to the videos on YouTube. Hit us up on social media. Tell us what you like, what you don't like, what you want to hear more of. Suggest some topics. This is episode 98. We're two away from 100, episode 100. We got some special stuff planned for you guys. So appreciate everyone tuning in each and every time. Tell everyone goodbye, Steve. Goodbye. Thanks for having me on, fellas. I really enjoy your, being on your podcast and enjoy your company. You got it. Of course, you guys can check out Steve. He's also on social media live. We'll have links to his social media and our social media. Tell him goodbye, Pritch. Yeah, ciao. It's just, Pritch always says ciao. And as I always say, good luck. Good luck.